I'm sure you'll agree that being a boatman, a boat builder, an archaeologist, and also an astronomer is a rather unusual mix. But it is my belief that it is all interconnected. And I want to take you on a journey of discovery and connections. At the boatyard, I was recently asked, why do you bother to save those old wooden boats? Surely they're past it. Wouldn't it be better just to cut them up and build new ones? Well, no. This is something which I just do not agree with. I believe that our past is important. It's where we have come from. It's made us who we are today. And it has also given us the building blocks for our future. Not all temples, or uh, sorry, not all um, archaeological or historical items are temples or made from gold. For archaeologists, it's the little things that get us excited, like bits of pottery. They are like little time capsules that, when included within a layer of soil, can help us date it. And that layer could be the key to dating the whole site. Add them to the other finds, and we can start to build up a picture of what life was like. Now, a wooden boat designed to carry coal may not sound that exciting to all, but who would have thought that these boats, traveling through the muddy ribbons of waterways throughout Britain over 200 years ago, would have had anything to do with your smartphone, the internet, the moon landings, the International Space Station, and also the discovery of many ancient civilizations and their cities. Is it possible that the one small step of building those rudimentary waterways was indeed a giant leap for mankind? It is my contention that the dawn of the Industrial Revolution in Britain in the 1700s was the foundation for all of the technological advancements that we see today. Canals have been around for thousands of years, of course, but it was the way that they were initially used to transport coal in England which opened up a whole new world of possibility and innovation. Steam power quickly followed with a huge leap into rail transport, which rapidly exported all over the world. And humankind embarked upon a constant voyage of discovery and problem solving, with an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and advancement. So much so that we felt the need to expand beyond the planet. The Greeks have written extensively about the moon, the stars and the constellations with philosophers speculating about our place within it all. Science and physics continue to seek answers, and recent discoveries from space have been truly astonishing. And yet, the more we learn, the more questions it raises. For instance, is it possible to see the Great Wall of China from space? Perhaps arrogantly, we thought that such a colossal feat of engineering as the Great Wall must be discernible from space. But of course, we now know empirically that it is not possible to see the Great Wall of China with the unaided eye out of the window of the International Space Station as it orbits 240 miles above us. Nevertheless, Space-age technology now allows us to examine our planet in minute detail. These advancements in satellite imagery and infrared photography now help us to locate and identify previously unknown archaeological sites around the world. Ironically, it has been by leaving the planet which has allowed us to delve so much deeper into our ancient past mapping the course of human development in a way that previous archaeologists could only have ever dreamt of. In the 1980s and 1990s, I worked on and supervised various archaeological excavations in Britain, working for various archaeological units and museums, 
on sites ranging from the Mesolithic period, the Middle Stone Age, around 11,000 BC through to the 1700s. The need for space age technology wasn't always necessary during these digs. It was mainly rescue archaeology. Sites which were in danger of being damaged, destroyed, and also developed. Despite the best efforts of archaeologists, so much of our past has been lost every day. And this is evident in the ever-changing face of our cities, towns, and villages. How many clues are there to our ancient past within their street names? Baker Street, Butcher's Row, Mill End. It's interesting to take a photograph of a street or a location and to map it over time. Today, it's just a photograph. In a year, similar. In 10 years, it's interesting to see how things change. But in 100 years, it becomes an important historical record which is impossible to see at the time of taking the photo. I am lucky enough to operate and manage Thule's Boatyard. Its origins date back to 1778. Its postal address for many years was Factory Street, Banbury. The factory is long gone. In fact, the street has also gone. And despite the best efforts of the Luftwaffe in World War II and more recently developers, it is the oldest continuously operated boatyard on the inland waterways. The boatyard today continues to be relevant by continuing to serve the boating community, sometimes by using ancient boat building methods as well as using the latest products. Often, many historical sites become static exhibits or museums. Working in active scheduled ancient monuments are rare, but can and do provide a unique understanding of the modern technological design. They should be viewed as powerhouses of problem solving, marrying traditional working methods with new technologies, living and breathing, for all to see. At the boatyard, not all of our progressions and innovations are made with hammers, welders, and woodworking tools. It's not just about boats. We, too, have looked to the stars seeking answers. And whilst the satellites and the International Space Station continues their observations of us, we watch them and beyond into the heavens. Building upon the problem-solving traditions and skills of the old boatyard, we have developed new technology. And in partnership with AWR Technology, we have designed and built a new type of telescope mount, which is based upon the English mount. This was a hefty uh, Victorian design, which was installed into large observatories. It was very stable because the design allows for the weight of the telescope to be evenly distributed between two large bearings. We have taken the English mount, we have modified it, we have shrunk the design, and we have kept the load-bearing strength by bringing the bearings together into a C-shaped bracket. So now, rather than being a one-off, it can now be installed into any observatory anywhere in the world. It is then aligned with the Earth's axis and driven with motors to counteract the Earth's rotation to hold an object with pinpoint accuracy. It is fully go-to, and it can locate and point the telescope at any object in the sky. It was launched at the International Astronomy Show. By better understanding the thoughts and the ideas of our predecessors, we can open up new and exciting possibilities. By standing on the shoulders of the giants, who are the innovators and the inventors, uh, we can open up new and exciting possibilities. Uh, the International Space Station may not be able to see the Great Wall of China, but we can clearly see the sun reflecting off its solar panels as it passes overhead. And if we would like a better look, then we can use modern telescopes which owe their origins to the works of Lippice and Galileo over 400 years ago. And if we'd like to photograph it, 
then we can attach cameras to those modern telescopes and mount them upon our modified English mount. It's this constant connection to the past which fires us headlong into the future. At the boatyard, I am determined to keep the boatyard modern and relevant. And by looking to the future, we'll be developing and nurturing traditional working uh, practices of uh, boat building skills, including the latest technology, including the latest battery and propulsion systems. And yet, such quirky and unusual places are fragile in a world obsessed by spreadsheets and profit. It may be possible to calculate the cost of such a place, but the value it adds to our community and the future of our waterways is impossible to measure. This was never far from the mind of a man called Tom Rolt, the writer of a hugely successful and influential book called Narrow Boat. His work led to the formation of the Inland Waterways Association and arguably the saving of our modern canals. He knew the boatyard with his boat building skills and little workshops. His favorite was the wheelwright shop. He loved the smells, the sounds, to see wheels being made and spokes being shaved with delicate tools. But he also knew that these skills and all of the skills of the boatyard were at risk of being lost. The buildings themselves were saved, and this was down to the efforts of a handful of people in the 1990s who believed it was wrong for the boatyard to be closed and knocked down. And they managed to raise public opinion and also get a preservation order placed upon the buildings. But shortly afterwards, a planning application was made wanting to turn the buildings into a flower bed and a food kiosk. Amazing. But luckily, this never happened. But what would have happened if the planning application was successful? It would have been turned into a static exhibit. It would be void of context and difficult to understand. It would have been made irrelevant. I have worked on many sites over the years which are no longer here, from working water mills to little businesses with interesting buildings, machineries, and tools, all deemed unimportant and in the way of development. Their buildings, buildings have either been knocked down or turned into fancy coffee shops and bars and needing archaeologists and historians to understand them. So going back to the original question of why do we bother to save those old wooden boats? It's because it's down to us to look after our past. And we need to look at the ever-changing face of our cities, towns and villages and see the loss of our culture, traditions and skills. With this in mind, I will leave the last words to Sonia Volt when she remembered her late husband, Tom. And she remarked, he knew and loved the wheelwright shop, but he could not be so interested in a museum of a wheelwright shop. Thank you.